Here we go. Fantastic again. Brilliant. We might need to change the image next time. The Mario Mancini show. Yeah. Your show. Yeah, you're... Everybody loves that picture, but that's when I was my at my fattest. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody gets me with uh like Playboy Buddy Rose when I was in my the best shape I was ever in, you know. Your show, it's good to have you back on, was hijacked last time by a good friend of yours, Mr. Paul Roma. What did you make of all that kind of stuff? Well, this is what Rick. I made of it. This is what I made of it. And Ric Flair or anybody associated with Ric Flair looked at it and went, oh, man, Roma wants a payday. You know what? That was a shoot on Roma's part. That was a shoot on Roma's part, horsemen against horsemen. And, and, and don't get me wrong. If Flair said, listen, I got to go over Roma. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, I understand that. But that's not the point. The point was what Roma have in the Widowmaker, all of his arteries replaced by veins in his legs, by having titanium knees, by suffering a broken neck, that if you called him and said, hey, Roma, he's got to go like this. All the way around. He can't go like this. His elbows won't straighten out. They're permanently bent. So what Roma, the shoot of it was, you know, Rick went through so much, all these injuries, all this, all that, all this. He just wanted to show the world that, you know, I've been through that and more. And I'm 63 years old and look at me. You know what I mean? I could still, I could still hang. I could, I could still drop that elbow from the top rope. You know, I think that was the shoot of it um, and not the payday. But you're talking about guys that are in the wrestling business. They're in the carnival so yeah. everything's a work. Everything is a work. Everything. So he's like, oh, Roma wants a payday, you know. And and I, I really don't think that's that was the case. I think Roma, uh, a lot of it was a shoot on Roma's part just to prove to the world, you know, who he was, number one. And I think he's getting pretty sick of, um, and I know he's admitted on a podcast, was he, um, what, was he a great fit? for the four horsemen was he a natural four horseman and he even said himself i know i wasn't but i think it was important to him to say listen i deserve to be there you know in this match would have done that would have done that for him too so i think there that it was half a shoot on roma's part i think it was disappointing i don't know if you if you seen the clip that i showed paul when we were talking in the last show about rick was on his podcast with Conrad Thompson and they seen all the stuff I sent out and tweets and whatever and um, they acknowledged Paul without mentioning his name. His really. name. Yeah, and what they said was uh, some of these guys looking for a last match never had a good first match, which I thought yeah. was, which I thought was in bad taste to be honest with you. But yeah, uh, it was it, it was in very bad taste because I, I said it a million times and I'll say it again. Roma is the greatest athlete I've ever seen. Um, you know, I kind of grin because uh, Monday night, you know, I teach at Paradise Alley. I, I, I teach the beginners. Uh, we're very honest at Paradise Alley. Like, you know, you're going to start with Mario. Uh, oh, we're not. I'm not going to start with you. And Paul goes, no. And when they come in on Monday, I go, do you know why you're starting with me? And they're like, no. I go, because you're going to learn how to bump. Back bump, flip, hit the ropes, the turnbuckles, go through the middle rope, over the top rope. I go, who better to teach you that than one of the top five jobbers in the history of this business? If I teach you how to fall, you're definitely going to fall right. You know, <laughs> you know? so, um, but I was, I was laughing Monday night because one of our, our, our students that that has been seasoned for a little over a year, he was he was uh, dropping an elbow from the top rope, 
and he ran from the corner, jumped up on the second rope, spun, and stood up on the top rope with no hands. Wow. And, and uh, you know, that is a Roma signature. Any, any wrestler who wrestles anywhere around the world who climbs the ropes with no hands, people that really know their stuff will look and go, Roma train that guy. Because Roma's the only wrestler that I know of that ever climbed the ropes with no hands. So, um, you know, even when I did my reverse flying body press off the second rope, I, I held on to him for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, in Roma it has recorded the highest drop kick in pro wrestling history. Um, drop kick in big John stud in the forehead and his left foot was on his forehead and his right foot was over his head. And John stud was six foot 10. And Roma, and that that's a vertical leap, by the way. He wasn't had a running start or anything like that. That was just a plain old vertical leap. So it, Roma was a pretty incredible athlete. And um, it, he's had a lot of great matches. You know what I mean? And he, he was tutored by Harry Fuji with his psychology and everything like that. And, you know, uh, like I said, he was taught by the same guys I was taught by. We were taught by the greats, Chief J. Strongbow, Arnold Skull, and – Gorilla Monsoon, Pat Patterson, Terry Garvin, Blackjack Lonza, Blackjack Mulligan, you know, all these guys, you know, they're teaching us the psychology of wrestling, you know, and you can't get any better than that. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, in my book, um, Roma was underused. Um, he didn't get the push he deserved. I mean, when you got a guy like Kurt Henning who gets a gimmick of Mr. Perfect and walks up to Roma and says, hey, you should have this, not me. Uh, you're Mr. Perfect, not me. And let me tell you some Roma would have. He would have crushed that gimmick, crushed it. Um, so, you know, it, it goes along the same lines of how do you make it in the business back then? One, bloodline. Two, you're a freak. You know, and I say that respectfully. You know what I mean? You're, you're, God gave you the gift of being six foot eight, and, you know, or three. Um, Pat Patterson has way with you. <laughs> that was the three ways to get in and to get a push. And if you pick number three, you're getting a real big push in the back and the front. So that's why, you know what? I, I'm living proof. I kept losing. I didn't have a bloodline. I, I didn't stand out in the crowd. And I never was with Pat. So because if I was, you know, I would have came out with a, with a different gimmick. Do you think if Pat was still alive today that he would have been drawn into all this Vince McMahon and all this John Laurinaitis, all this scandal from WWE yeah. and it become more to light? Yeah, because um, well, Pat has passed away. Terry Garvin has passed away. Um, Mel Phillips is somewhere. Lord knows where, but he's somewhere. They can drag him back in if they can find him. Um, yeah, because that stuff existed 30 years ago too. So yeah, they would have, they would have dragged that in. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I found it, um, shocking when Rita was on and she said that, uh, you know, when Pat ordered those girls to break her legs. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Well, Pat, you gotta remember Pat was the diva, you know, I, I guess there's roles. You know, and he, it, Pat was very flamboyant. He was, you know, he was, you know, um, what are you going to say? You didn't like women. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and if you're a women, woman worker, he was okay. But to be a referee, he kind of, he frowned on that. You know what I mean? He frowned on it. While we're on the subject of WWE, I'm going to, pop up something here on the screen for you which is something that we haven't done on this show before but this this is the wwe.com website and this is the alumni section on it okay 
Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to search for you, Mario yeah. Mancini. Oh, guess what? You're not there. They took me off the network. I, this is not the network now. This is just it's on the not. WWE website. It's a, it's a WWE website, but they have every superstar that's been in the company. And you're not yeah. there. Well, like, give me, give me a random wrestler. Paul Roma. Paul Roma. I actually checked this. Paul Roma is not there either, which is wow. crazy. Give me another one. Uh, Gino Carabello. Spell G E N O. G E N O. Oh. That's very strange. Um, guys that you worked with will say Greg Valentine. Greg is there. Um, um, how about Barry Horowitz? Barry. No, he's not there. This is very surprising to me because, like, I thought everyone was there, and I searched for you and Paul Roma, and you, you guys both weren't there. And then the only the next person I thought was was. Chris Benoit, obviously, because they erased him from WWE, and he's not there either. But I'm just wondering, like, why aren't you guys there as part of history, in your opinion? Um, it's the same opinion I've I've had, you know, since this Taker thing happened. They don't care. They 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 don't care. Listen. As I got older, smarter, more educated, and I reflected, um, it was even said back then. You know, it was even said back then when you when when you see a guy like uh, One Man Gang walk in for the first day, and they go, "Who's that?" and they go, "New meat for Hogan." That was the phrase, "New meat for Hogan." So when it comes to the WWE, you know, back then, you were a racehorse. And we, when you couldn't run anymore, they put you out the pasture. And they didn't look back. So, you know, I'm not surprised that I'm not there. I'm not surprised that Rome is not there. I'm I'm waiting for him once once this certain thing comes out. I'm waiting to be taken off the network anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I I think I'm up there in a few matches. So, uh, and if they ever came out with another edition of the WWE Encyclopedia, I don't t- anticipate me being next to Mark Henry anymore. Um, you know, w- w- which is fine because, um, you know, they say once you start standing up for yourself, um. Uh, the people that used to walk all over you start getting offended because my, Oh, he's standing up for himself. How dare he? You know what I mean? Well, um, I'm going to give you an example from 1975 to 2015. I was a New York giants fan. I just watched the New York giants and I realized one thing about the giants. They didn't give a shit about their fans. They just didn't care. They didn't care to improve their football team. They say snug remarks, smug remarks. So I became a Baltimore Ravens fan. And I've been a Baltimore Ravens Ravens fan since 2015. So it, it, it's all right down to relationship. You know, if you're in a marriage and all of a sudden your wife doesn't care about you anymore. Well, the, the natural response is, yeah, I don't give a shit about you either. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of along those lines. It's like, oh, my God, it's the WWE. Yeah, I get it. It's not my WWE. I wasn't in the WWE. I was in the WWF. And um, if they don't want to recognize me, you know, and and watch me get up in the morning and limp out of my bed and grunt and groan, son of a bitch. And when it rains and it's it's really the the humidity is thick and the, the dampness is really 
really bad out there, and, and that herniated disc in my back starts really acting up. Sciatica coming and going half the year. It was my decision to do it, but there's no appreciation for it. I learned that this past April. There's no respect for it, and respect is the foundation of the business. They show no respect. The WWE shows no respect. Now, now, here, here's the thing. We talk about this. Uh, uh, you showed me this Vince McMahon in the Hall of Fame thing, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's another work. The whole thing's a work, you know what I mean? And, and a big send-off. Send off to where? I don't know. So you have to, I want, I want the people to know, everybody that watches this, everybody that's going to watch this, and I want you, I want everybody to think how this makes sense, okay? And it's sad in some ways. I'm not going to mention any names, but you have guys out there from the 80s if you talk to to them, the WWE is going to be a bouquet of flowers. Okay? And this is the sad part because they think somehow, some way, they're going to call them. Mm. They're going to call them. Not to work full time. Maybe a Legends Raw or SmackDown. Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Uh, another Legends House. Or some other show. Hey, let's grab this guy from 86. Let's grab that guy from. So the WWE is going to be sunshine and rainbows. But if you talk to people that burnt that bridge. Or or feel that they got screwed over from the WWE. Well, you're going to get a quite a different story. And it's not like revenge on their 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 on their end, it's just the truth, you know, I mean, how everything unfolded and everything. So, um, you know, it's not like, well, I've been, I've had private conversations with you and you know, what's coming. And, and I, when that gets out to the whole world, then, you know, I took a flamethrower to it. You know what I mean? It's done. done. I took a flamethrower to that. But again, they're going to look and go, Mario Mancini, the jobber, jobber, him, him, are are that they're hanging their hat on him? Well, here's here's the here's the deal. I was there. You can't take that away from me. And I had conversations that were had, and and it's a true fact that those conversations happen. So. You can't take that away from me because that's the truth. Okay. We so have to they, have to tread carefully around that one. Um, well, well in, yeah. In, I in, mean, in broad, in broad perspective, what's coming, don't say exactly what it is, but just. Well, well, there, there's, there, you know, let me just say this. And now, now you got yourself involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <October 18th. laughs> Thanks, man. Sweetie. You were minding your own business in Ireland, and I came yeah. around and flipped everything upside down. We, we, so, we'll talk about that next month. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So let's 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 just say for the record here, since everything has happened and everything's gone down with Vince McMahon, there are a lot of people out there. Um, in New York and in Hollywood and everything that want to run documentaries and shows and everything and, and, uh, cover it, you know, um, so in a, in a broad perspective, um, I, I, after New York magazine, I developed a, um, very trusting professional relationship. Oh, uh, make sure professional relationship with someone um, that really that really came off the right, so sincere and so right to me. 
um, that I, you know, um, I agreed to to uh, participate in this project. Um, and it's a very large, pro very large project. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very large project. And um, uh, I didn't feel bad about it because I knew I was telling the truth. I, I didn't feel bad about it. Um, you know, and, and what are they going to say? Who else is going to say anything? All right, Mancini. So if you went to Texas and you were recognized. And they even gave you a payday or, you know what, they, they made a jobber section of the WWE Hall of Fame and you got inducted. You wouldn't be doing any of this shit. Maybe they're right. However, that would have showed me loyalty. So you have to remember something when it comes to me. And no, only my close friends and family know me like a book. It's not the sour grapes that it didn't happen is why I did what I did. I did it for the truth. Okay. The disrespect that I was shown made me not care, made me not feel valued. All right. And it made me feel like, you know, I tell fans, like, you know, a fan comes up to me to, in Hamburg, PA. Big smile on his face. He's just staring at me. I'm like, okay. What do we got here? And he goes. I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mario. I go, yeah. He goes, and this guy's like in his early to mid 40s. And he goes, when we play wrestled when we were kids, I was you. I was you. I was always you. And I go, well, I hope you won. He goes, no, no, no. I always lost because you always lost. I had to lose. But I was always you. And I'm standing here staring at you. That's amazing. He goes, it, it, it's, it's amazing. I got to take a picture with you, get your autograph. And like, yeah. When that guy walks away, that's when I say, I don't mind getting up in the morning limping. I don't mind the sciatica. I don't mind that stuff because of him. I don't mind it. But yeah. you know what? When I get guys like Bull James, Bull Dempsey in the NXT, Bull James, you know, when I get guys like him and other guys that were were um, Matt Stryker, guys like that, that come up to me and thank me for paving the way for them. I appreciate that because I got the shit knocked out of me. I, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a carpenter. I can't draw you a house, but I can build you one. I can build you a house. And, and damn it, if I didn't work with everyone that came in that was new, that was going to face Hogan. I did. I did. As Howard Finkel said when he inducted me into the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, if you knew you were going to make it big in this business, if you took one trip, and that one trip was through Mancini-ville. Once you got through Mancini-ville, you know there was only one way that was up, right? Respect like that. Maurice, if they sent me a letter stating, hey, a Christmas card. A, how about that? A Christmas card. Merry Christmas, Mario. We appreciate you. WWE. Wow. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, because as I'm, I'm going to say, you know, all these documentaries and these, these, uh, uh, beyond the mat and, and dark side of the ring. When I was a kid, I had a dream about being a professional wrestler. And they show footage of when they were 11 years old, whether it be Shawn Michaels or whoever. Do you think I had the same fucking dream? I had the same dream. When I was 14 years old, I told my family in 1980 that I was going to be the next Bruno Sammartino. 
I didn't tell them, hey, I'm going to be a pro wrestler and I'm taking Frank Williams's place. I'm going to be the next Frank Williams. I didn't say that. I said, I'm going to be the next Bruno San Martino. We all had a dream. But the guys that went over and had a dream, they're the ones that they get the kudos. They're, those are the guys that, that people genuflect in front of, you know, the yeah. legends, the legends of the business. Do you know what? It goes back to what Paul Roma said about Flair and to bring it back again. It's like, uh, Rick, you only won because they let you win. Right. They, right. Real. right. 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 And I was only a jobber because they told me to lose. You know, you know how many, Maurice, you know how many house shows I did walking out to my car? Hey, Mario, Mario. I would never ignore any of them. Not me. I didn't come out with that towel over my head, draped over my head, walking, hunched down to my car. I came out as me, and I stopped for every one of them. Hey, Mario, Mario, shake my hand and go, wow, you could really wrestle. I went, yeah, I can. Thank you. You're a really good wrestler. How come they don't show that on TV? And I go, well, I faced harder opponents on TV or that are much bigger than me because, you know, kayfabe was alive. So I had to protect. I, I couldn't break kayfabe. You know what I mean? So I, I said, well, they're a lot more experienced and bigger than me on TV. You know, I, I wrestled a guy my same size here, you know, like whether Iron Mike Sharp or SD Jones or whatever. When you're on about the towel over the head and people coming out of the arena, who was the worst person for that? Who didn't interact with the fans? Or have you any stories about people avoiding the fans, I guess? Well, no, no. You know, Bret Hart did it all the time. Bret Hart, they all did it. They all beefcake. They all did it. They all came out with the towels over their head. That was the thing. You know what I mean? Just like there was a, th which I thought was so stupid, and um, Hogan started it. Spandex pants and snakeskin boots in the dressing room. That's what they would walk around with. Spandex pants. If Listen, if you had spandex pants and snakeskin boots, you were over. You were super <laughs> That was that was it. If you, I, I'd always look. Oh, well, they got the spandex pants and the snakeskin boots, you know. And and I tried to look for snakeskin boots. I couldn't find them. So, um, you know, the whole thing is a work. And, and we all had our positions, you know. And we all had our places. And my place was on the bottom. I, I, I you know, it's like <laughs> the WWE can come back and go. Mario Mancini didn't possess the, the physical attributes or uh, possess the talent in order for us to give him a push and give him a gimmick and put him over. Listen to me. He was a good wrestler. It, it wasn't like he wasn't. But they put a green wig on somebody and dressed him up like a clown and put him yeah. out there and he didn't look like Paul Orndorff or Paul Roma right and they yeah. put him out there and put him over they put him out there and put him over they took a great technical wrestler a very good in ring wrestler spiked his hair up spray painted it red and called him the Red Rooster. Terry Taylor was a great wrestler. You don't do that to Terry Taylor. You don't do that and embarrass him like that. That's Terry Taylor, man. He was good in the ring. He was really good. But they called him the Red Rooster. Yeah. So, I, you know, I guess if they told me to go out there in feathers... And and go out there and cluck and walk around like this when they introduce me, you know. And my finish was an egg layer. I would have been over. And you know what, Maurice? Yeah, they would they would have made an action figure. What, Billy, what do you want for for Christmas? I want the chicken. I want the chicken. The WWF chicken. Don't tell me that I didn't have the tools 
don't tell me because anybody, any, any, you know what? The, the end of the argument is I sucked. Why would you hold on to me for that long then? Why wasn't I in and out? Why didn't you say, hey, kid, you don't have the goods. Get out of here. Eh, nah. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91. I wanna, we never discussed how the end came about there and what exactly happened and how much Mark, decision was yours and it was all my it was the whole thing was my decision so yeah. so mark young mark young was chief jay strongbow's son red hair freckles chief adopted him came in with american flag spandex really good worker when he'd make his comeback, he'd break dance in the ring. Really good break dancer. He couldn't get any bookings. So I was in the back of the Harvard Civic Center. And I was arguing with the chief as usual. This is bullshit. I've been here all this time. I paid my dues. I need to get a push. What the hell is going on here? He says, listen, get out. I can't help you anymore. I can't help you. I can't get my own kid booked. And when Chief J Strongbow looks at you and says, I can't get my own kid booked, you're dead. I went up to Pat Patterson. Pat, I didn't pay my dues. Mario, I like you. The office likes you. Just be patient. He said, I can't. I, I can't. No, no. I left. I left. Phone rang. It was Terry Garvin. I was living at home. My mother put the phone to her chest and went, Terry Garvin. I'm not here. I said, I'm sorry, Terry. He's not here. And my phone never rang again. That that was it. I got out. I, I got out. And thank God I did because I would have embarrassed myself because... They would have told me not to come back because look at what happened in 1994. Between 93 and 94, the Attitude Era started, and they phased out jobbers. It was star against star. There were no more jobbers. Yeah, they were only kind of using them maybe in dark matches and stuff like that, really. Yeah, they? so, you know, it, back then, I, I wouldn't have had an offer. Um. I wouldn't have had an offer to be an agent or anything. You know what I mean? People always ask me that, you know, would you like to be an agent? You were sure. I would love to be an agent. You know what I mean? So I, you know, cause I get yelled at now by Roma for being too nice and treating all the, all the, all the guys good. Like I got a show on Sunday at two o'clock at the Cadillac ranch in Southern the Connecticut. He's like, how many men? And that's my baby. That's mine. Just mine. And Roman goes, how many matches do you have? 11? Did you say no to anybody who wanted to work the show, Mario? Or did you just tell everybody, yeah, come on, like a big party? I don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Um, so, yeah, I would have liked to be an agent. But, but, you know, putting that clown costume on, don't tell me I couldn't go over. And don't tell me I couldn't have sold tickets because I could have if you just gave me the chance. Now, did Mancini do all this because he has sour grapes? No, let me say it again. I don't have sour grapes. I don't have any animosity. And I respected the where I came from and I respected the man I worked for. And I always praised him highly until I got disrespected like I never even existed so and, you know it's that same old thing as when it comes to the WWE and you got guys in my position what do you got to lose you got nothing to lose and that's why I say you talk to the guys that and it's sad because they might be 75, 76 years old, and they still think their phone's going to ring. But you talk, you find out, hey, did you leave on good terms? No. No. And, and, and 
they're going to tell you the truth because they know they're not getting called back. Talk to Dr. D. You know, Dr. D is going to give you the truth. He doesn't lie, but he's not, again, one of these guys going, well, maybe it'll give me, maybe I can get a little payday here and there. And, you know, um, it's the same thing when these legends contracts came out. Nobody's going to bad mouth anybody if they're still getting money. Yeah, it's just a way of keeping them tied into the company, really, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You can you can tell by that. Yeah. Um but anyway, aside from like I know you say that you're not um no Sarah grapes or anything like that. And look, this podcast is only gonna be the tip of the iceberg for what's to come anyway. I will leave yes. that at that. Yeah, something something kind of huge is uh is coming down the pike, but um uh, you know, and, and it keeps happening. It, it, you know, I had conversations today. Oh, Vince McMahon and the WWE Hall of Fame. If nothing happened, if nothing happened and he was 77 years old and nothing happened, and maybe he was just getting tired or his health was failing or something, and they wanted to do that. That's like a shoot. That's he should be in the Hall of Fame. He's the Pied Piper. Yeah, but do you know what though? This is the the world that we live in. Like when this news story broke and people were outraged, we'll say about these affairs and him paying women off. Like that's that's not as bad as maybe some of the other rumors that you hear are allegations and other stuff that we've got into. But um I don't know. I really don't know. I just well, think me... that it, it what I was what my point was actually because I lost my trail of thought there for a second that when all that news broke and people were outraged by these affairs with women etc cetera, etc cetera, and then a few historic things came up it wouldn't have even been considered back then for him to go into the Hall of Fame. Now that two or three months has passed, people's short-term memories and stuff they've nearly forgotten about it. They've nearly forgiven him. Right, let's put him in the Hall of Fame. I just think it's crazy, like how quick things can change like that. Well, I can compare it to something. Lawyer I know gets in trouble for unethical practices. Yeah. And he's going to go in front of the board. And then this lawyer, prior to him going in front of the disciplinary board, out of the clear blue sky, uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, shows up at a food bank with 117 turkeys and starts handing out turkeys to the the people who can't afford to buy them, right? So he figures yep. maybe, maybe his good deed, but there's a motive for his good deed. There's a motive. You know, to say, hey, look what I did. Look, look what I, I, I did this too. Look, look, this nice thing I did. Go easy on me. You know what I mean? So the 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 wrestling business is, the WWE is ignoring the media on, on Vince. So, so if it was a straight angle, should he be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, he's the Pied Piper. He, he made all this stuff. I, of course he should be. But they're doing it for different purposes now, you know, and, and they're doing it. It's a work. Is it's it similar a- in a way? Is is it similar in a way to people saying, oh, I, this is completely out there. But like people say, Chris Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame because of his wrestling ability and what he done for the business. Now, obviously, well, the way he went is different completely. Morally, well, well, you can't put him in there. Well, yeah, that's hardcore. Those are hardcore fans and hardcore um, wrestling philosophers. But if you go with the general public, if you go with the general public, it's it's going to – what you've done outside of the ring is going to eclipse anything that you've done, especially if it's murder, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's going to eclipse anything that you've done in the ring. Any of compliments you, you ever had. So, the the thing about this work is inducting them, not only inducting them in the Hall of Fame, 
but giving him a send off, giving him a send off. See, Vince McMahon is the wizard. So Dorothy and her three friends knocked on the door on Oz and a guy slid a window open. What do you want? We want to see the, the wizard. He needs a heart. He needs a brain. He's, we need to see the wizard. They let him in. The two big doors open up. The guy who answered the door, he goes behind a machine. He's the wizard. And he starts playing all of this stuff. And they're scared because they're thinking they're looking at something bigger than life that's a wizard that's going to help them until the, the dog, you know, breaks his gimmick. And they discover that this guy's not a wizard at all. It's kind of like inducting Vince McMahon into the WWE Hall of Fame. That's not the big one. Giving him a proper send-off. Giving Vince McMahon a proper send-off away from his company is like putting a Vince McMahon mannequin in a in a hot air balloon and letting it go. And the mannequin is just standing in the hot air balloon and everybody's going, bye, bye. Meanwhile, Vince is standing there with a, with a Kentucky Fried Chicken get up on he's got the gray mustache and the beard he looks like colonel sanders he's got the hat on and everything and nobody knows it's him because he's gonna go in the back room and he's gonna pull the strings and he's still gonna be the wizard i know that and the people who don't think they're gonna get a phone call from the wwe they know that every one of my brothers that sees news, that looks at the news and says, Vince is getting inducted in the Hall of Fame and he's getting a send-off, they get a good belly laugh because everybody knows how controlling he is and everybody knows how OCD he is about his company. I said it once and I'll say it again. He will give up that company when they have to snatch it out of his dead, cold hands. Mm -hmm. There's the, the only way he's ever going to give up that company is when the good Lord takes him. Yeah. He's because he's that, obviously it, it's all work. Yeah. He's obviously taken a step away from it physically. Like nobody really sees him going near the arenas and stuff like that. And people like TMZ and, people like that would be good at kind of tracking someone like Vince. So, but the thing to remember is like, look at me and you talking in America and Ireland right now. He can still talk. He can still run the show from fucking Skype or whatever he wants to do. You Maurice, know? there have been heads of the mob that have run the mob from jail. They give their orders yeah. while they were in prison and it goes out to the street and the orders are followed through. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just never, it's, ne I don't care who says what, where, how, or when, it's never going to happen. He's never going to walk away from that company. Never. I'm Until looking the at, Lord takes him. Yeah, I'm looking at something like, say, WrestleMania next year in LA there. There's absolutely no way that he's not going to be there. Oh, he'll, he'll be, uh, he'll be, uh, um, He'll be some sort of, of guest. Yeah. You know? And look who's here making an appearance. You know, he'll yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll be the mascot. We have a mascot. Maybe, do you know what? Maybe he could be the doink at the Battle Royal at WrestleMania next year. Listen, uh, you know, I think I make pretty good points. When I bring up doink and I bring up the Red Rooster, you know what I mean? The, you know, di didn't they hatch a chicken one time? Uh, I think so, yeah. I, 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 Listen, it just goes to show you that they can take anybody and do anything with them. 
they can take anybody and, and, and do any. Uh, listen, here's what I heard from Tony Altamar. This is what I heard. Bruno had a falling out with the old man. And Bruno was tired. Bruno said, you'll never sell out the garden again. Vince Sr. said, I can put the heavyweight strap on howdy duty and sell out Madison Square Garden. Superstar Billy Graham, because you can't forget, I was a huge mark before I became a wrestler, and I am a wrestling historian. Superstar Billy Graham took the, the belt from Bruno San Martino in 1977. He was a bridge for a year, and then they gave it to Bob Backlund. Yeah. That was his reference. They had to bring Bruno back in 1980 after he said he was going to retire, 80, 81, to start that thing with Zabisco or whatever because Backlund couldn't sell out Madison Square Garden. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they, they, Howard Finkel always said it the best. God bless him. God bless Howard Finkel. You go, just every now and then, just every now and then, to see what happens, just have a jobber go over out of the clear blue sky. On, on a guy who's really over, just a uh, schoolboy, small package, just put him over. See what happens. You know, um, the, the closest I ever came was a very long TV match with Playboy Buddy Rose. Those people really thought I was going to beat him. They really did. And I wish I did. But I couldn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? I couldn't. But I, I wish because I, I have gone over three times. And the time I, I did go over, the arena was deafening because the, they were hardcore WWF fans. They see me every week on TV lose. So to see me win, they went absolute. It was deafening. What a great feeling. And you get addicted to that. Yeah. And you want you want more of it and you couldn't get more of it. You know, because they wouldn't let you get more of it. You know what I mean? Um, and I didn't mind because that was my job and that was it. But I thought as you know, as the years went on, you know, I even told my students if they made it to the WWE, um, I'm gonna come back there and see you if you make it there. I don't know if they'll let you back there. I go, excuse me? <laughs> what? I don't think they'll let I go, let me tell you something. If I showed up at a WWE event and they let, didn't let me in the back, that'll be the first time in my whole life that I would get arrested. <laughs> I would get arrested. I, I would definitely get arrested. You know, and then I was dating one girl. And she said, oh, uh, SmackDown's in Hartford. And I went, yeah. Will you, will, you, will you come with me? I go, you want me to sit out in a crowd and watch pro wrestling? Well, yeah. I go, you want me to buy a ticket? Well, yeah. I go, I'm not doing that. Well, you know, they have these chairs. I go, you want me to show up there and just go in and grab a chair and leave with it? You can do that. I go, let someone stop me. Let one of the production people see me walking out with a ringside chair. You know, they have it all decorated and everything. And let them say, hey, what are you doing? And let me tell them who I am and not go, oh, okay. Let, let me, and, and hey, put that chair back. I go, you want me to come to this thing. The only way I'll come to it is if I can go in the back. And rumors have it, I might not be able to do that. And if I can't, there's going to be a big problem. Because I don't care who's back there. I was there first. I was there first. 
Hey, when I got out of the business, Tony Gurria was an agent for years, years. I wouldn't even show up. I wouldn't even show up. Friends would call me. We want to go to New Haven. Go where the wrestlers go in. Grab the security guy. Tell him to get Tony Gurria. Tony Gurria comes, say Mario Mancini said you'd give us tickets. They'd go to the arena. They'd get the security guy. Gurria would come up and said, Mario Mancini said he'd give you four tickets. He'd go, that son of a bitch. Tell him he owes me, you know, three cups of coffee. And he'd give him the tickets. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, uh, it, it again, it's people. It's not sour grapes or it's it's not because I wasn't Bret Hart or Kurt Henning or any of those guys. It's because years later, I wasn't showing any respect. So why am I going to give it? So if somebody asks me a question and I know what the truth is, I'm going to say it. Other than it, because let's face it, let's be real here. There's guys out there that are going to still protect the business and they're going to protect the office at all costs. Chief Jay Strongbow is rolling over in his grave right now. Because if he was alive and he saw this, he would have me at, have me on the phone for three hours telling me to keep my fucking mouth shut. What's wrong with me? What, did I lose my mind? Shut up. Get that guy in Ireland. Tell him you'll sue him if he airs that podcast. You made a big mistake. Shut your mouth. Keep it shut. What the hell do you care? That's what Chief would say to me. Chief's not here. He's not here. So you know what? And I understand he made an appearance for WCW after he left the WWE. So he would have never done that if he didn't if he didn't feel he was disrespected at one point. Because I know Strongbow better than a lot of people. And if he felt he wasn't disrespected, he'd turn them all down. But since he showed his face there, something happened. Something happened. And he never talked to me about it. So... It's not sour grapes. It's the lack of disrespect. And the WWE, pro wrestling is an illusion. And the WWE just wants to keep that illusion going. Don't forget, this is 2022, and the storylines are bigger than the wrestling. People, Vince McMahon is just another storyline. He's a mannequin in a balloon. There you go. What was that movie? Um, Jesus. The guy died, and they put sunglasses on him, and they took him everywhere. Oh, Bert, Bert and Ernie, I think, isn't it? Uh, 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 <sighs> something along those lines. There's something along those lines, yeah. 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 So, um, was that Weekend at Bernie's? No. That's the one, yeah. That's uh, like Yeah. That. So, I'm way so off. That's what, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're 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 dragging a Vince McMahon mannequin. No, Vince is right there. He's right there. Don't you see him? He's just got your his back toward you. Meanwhile, he's toiling, you know, you know, working on the next angle or storyline or 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 you know, counting the money, you know, for the following year. This is just never gonna happen. I it's just net he's never stepping away. And while we wrap up, I'll just say when we when we return next month, uh, it'll be quite funny. I think. I think in, in and around in and around the end you, of October. You know what? I'm I'm sorry, Maurice. You know what I mean? Maybe that day that you first inboxed me and said, "Hey, I do a podcast from Ireland. Would you mind doing it?" Maybe what you would have what I put you through. Maybe you would have backspaced out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got cheap heat in the thick of things here, boy. Yeah. There's gonna, gonna be a lot of a lot of heat coming uh, next month, I think. Oh uh, yeah, I got cheap heat in, in in into it, but you know what? Um, it's only a small little bit of. Uh, I don't know if I can say what it is really, but uh, it's uh, it's not public knowledge yet about this 
other project. There's two projects, but there's one. Let's just say there's one coming out next month over in the States, as far as I'm aware, what I'm led to believe anyway. So, And the man himself is going to be featured talking to me on it. Well, listen, um, like I said, nobody's nobody's Teflon. And because you're a billion-dollar company and you're the biggest in the world in the profession that you're in, doesn't mean you can do whatever the hell you want. It doesn't mean that. And do you know Harvey, what the... Harvey Weinstein learned that, right? Do you know what the most... Uh, I don't know if it's the funniest thing or what it is, but Vince is going to watch that. There's no way he's not going to watch that. He might not have seen podcasts. He might be tuned into podcasts where he might have seen other things that you said over the last couple of years. He may not have, you know. Other people in the company probably seen them because they're always keeping an eye on what's been said on social media podcasts and things like that. But he's definitely going to see these more, I guess, prime time projects that are coming. And you know what he's going to say? He turned into Tony Altamar. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Mancini. But you know what? I, I'm right. He's. They're going to go. A jobber. Uh, yeah. I, he, how? How the hell did what? I was there. I, I saw some things. I, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? I know of a lot of guys out there that didn't leave with a good taste in their mouth. And like I said, I'm not going to mention them, but they, they go, uh, they go by their business. They go about their business and they don't, you know, it, it sometimes when they do podcasts, they'll, they'll let it, they'll let it be known or I'll talk to other wrestlers and say, oh, he, you know, he's probably still really good in with the office. And they'll go, he, he can't stand Vince. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I'll go, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it it's, it's, um, I, I just want people to understand that I'm no different than they are. And what do I mean by that? It's what I teach my kids. All right. If you work hard enough at something and you put your time in and you pay your dues, you're going to be rewarded for that. I did. I got nothing. And what I asked for, as they say in law school, when it, especially in evidence class, how much evidence do you need? Well, Sometimes you just need a peppercorn and they use the example of a peppercorn because it is just such the smallest thing you can think of a little tiny peppercorn. Sometimes you just need a peppercorn of evidence to bring a case forward. If they just gave me a damn peppercorn, a peppercorn of respect, I would appreciate it. No. No, no. So, you know, I, I am not, you know, billions of people are on Facebook, right? Everybody has seen this Facebook come across their Facebook. Why would you cross an ocean for someone who isn't willing to jump over a puddle for you? Mm -hmm. I think and that's a that, nice... <laughs> I think that's a nice way to to end things. <laughs> Before you get arrested. <laughs> but um pleasure as always. Um we're gone past we're quarter past midnight here and I've got to be up for work early in the morning. Well, I'll tell you this Maurice, let's wait a month. Let's wait for all this stuff to come out and um yeah. And we'll 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 have a chuckle. I think it's going to be a a fun run to uh, to Christmas time. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Maybe things will happen. Um, and look, I don't think they're going to be sending you uh, Christmas letters after this one, but they might certainly uh, be sending you different yeah. letters. <laughs> you know what I always think of? I always think of Stallone with no shirt on and the bandana holding a flamethrower and just burning down a bridge. That's what every time I do something like this, that's the picture I get in my head that I'm just putting the torch to the whole thing. But you know what? Europe and America, I will always be your jobber. You will <laughs> always be able to go on YouTube and you'll always be able to see Mario Mancini do the job. So much that when I go to wrestling conventions, I have a blue mat and you can get a photo op with me covering me for a three count. So even in 2022, I'll do a job for you too. So, um, as they say, you know, as who said it, was it, um, I forgot who said it. Oh, it was Gene Okerlund. I think Paul Roma was a four horseman. No matter what anybody says about that, no one can ever take that away from him. And what little, and, and believe me, I'm humble, what little I did in the wrestling business, no one can ever take that from me, and I won't let them. Have a good sleep, brother. I will. Thank you very much, and <laughs> I will be talking to you probably very, very soon. <laughs> All right, man. Talk to kids in. I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs>